Right, so I have this thing. It is a 240 volt rotisserie oven, little mini oven that I got for doing bits and pieces and it's obviously been a bit bashed about. What I thought might be fun actually was to take it to pieces and see if I could convert it into a 12 volt oven so it'd be suitable for recreational vehicle use or straight from your uh, battery using our ink. So that's where I'm gonna give, a, give it a go, really. The first thing to do, obviously, is to take it to pieces. And I can see there's a whole load of screws at the back here and I'm just gonna undo those and get to the bits. I've taken the case off and actually it's really quite simple. What we've got here are four long cartridge heaters. There's two there and two at the bottom there. Some really simple mechanical switching in here, sort of mechanical thermocouple. Uh, that's the uh, bars heating, so that's a straightforward switch there. And then we have a timer there, a mechanical timer circuit there. So really quite simple. And what I'm going to do is just take those bits apart and then we'll see what we can do with Here that. it is, uh, pulled apart and I've given it a wash. There's all the bits. These are the heating rods, incidentally. Kind of cool, but it's all 240 volts. And I want to change this to 12 volts. Now if we look at it, what we've got is this is the back. This is the base. These three sides had the actual cover on them. Now I would cover the whole of it if I could, but you could touch it, it could wear, so I'm not going to. I'm going to cover these bits that go inside the case, and I want to cover those with conductive ink. Now the problem with it is this is metal. We can't put the conductive ink on the metal, there isn't enough resistance, because say these heaters are resistive heaters. So we somehow have to put a film on there that can stand up to the temperature and will act as an insulator, and we put the conductive ink on top of that. Now I'm going to use this stuff, which is our stove and barbecue paint. And it's good to 650 degrees C. So just to spray it on there, leave it to dry, and then apply the conductive ink on that. Now it says to leave it for an hour. Actually, I'm going to leave it for longer. I'm going to leave it until the morning. And all I have to do is spread the sides where I want to put the heaters. And that's going to be here, here, and here. So I've painted the base metal with stove enamel, there it is. All I need to do now is put on the copper tape. Now obviously I'm going to do a series of them and I was thinking about two on each um, side of the oven and then I'll connect those in parallel, that'll draw more amps, get a bit more heat. And I'm just going to put the strips of copper onto there, all around the bit that I've painted. So I'll get on with that and then when I've done that, get back to you. Okay, so I've painted the thing with stove enamel, put on the copper strips and soldered on the connection wires. You'll notice the connection wires are quite proud. And that's because I'm going to put insulation in here. But, oops, that's the door. There it is. And all I now have to do is take some of our wonderful ink, the magical stuff that seems to do everything, and paint it between those copper bars that I've put on the three sides. And I'm going to give it a couple of coats, letting it dry, obviously, between each coat. One thing I have checked is that between these wires and the case, there's an infinite resistance, uh, because obviously we don't want an actual connection. When I've painted them and dried them, I, re I will recheck that, but I'll also check between the blue and the brown wires, which are the live and the uh, ground, to make sure that there isn't an infinite resistance. That is, we're getting a high resistance, because these are resistance heaters, between the two wires, but no resistance, uh, sorry, an infinite resistance between the wire and the case. Okay, so here is a side of it painted with our wonderful ink, and I've also put insulation blanket around it, which is incidentally why the wires were standing high. Because you're not allowed to get wires hot. If you get them hot, then you derate them, and it's quite dramatic how they derate. So as much as possible, you leave the wires on the outside of the insulation, and I've got insulation blanket all the way around, apart from this side. So I'm going to put the insulation blanket on this side, and it's nearly ready for its top back on. What I really need, obviously, is some kind of temperature control and then the top can go back on that, and that is that finished. But I'm going to put the insulation in first, and then we'll have a look at uh, what we can do about temperature control. Okay, so here it is almost finished. It's actually missing uh, the heat control, but uh, this is just stunning, actually.
That is 202 degrees in there. That's, that's fantastic. So 202 degrees on two car batteries. I tried it on one. I couldn't get it more than about 100 because it was just sort of giving out more than it was heating up. But it was absolutely astounding because it was only drawing about 5 amps at 12 volts. So that's like 60 watts. So I put two batteries on. It's about 120 watts, this damn thing. It's pulling. It took about 10 minutes to get to 202 degrees. And we made it with our ink. So, with our ink, it is indeed more than possible to make an off-grid RV oven. Now, I'm probably going to do a large size one, a real one, so to speak, uh, and, but I'll probably do that on the members channel. I'm going to do some um, Arduino control of the temperature, uh, a little display, keypads, you can set it, uh, a thermocouple and uh, Arduino control of the temperature, do a large size oven and run it off a battery. I mean, that's just amazing. So we got 120 watt oven. This thing was about three kilowatts. It's now 120 watts. Anyway, I thought it was really awesome, so I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching.